plans for CM Punk to turn heel in AEW have been revealed. All In has hit a major ticket milestone. And we've got an update on a major anticipated WWE return. Stay tuned for all the deets. Now, one thing since the return of CM Punk has been uh, it's been kind of talked about a lot is what's the reception going to be like outside of Chicago? Oh, yeah. How's things going to go down? Where, where, where are people going to be kind of sitting on this whole thing after the, the rigmarole of a situation that's been drawn out very it. publicly? Uh, it, it's, it's all kind of up in the air. And there are a lot of questions as to, you know, could, could he be face if everybody's booing him? Uh, but Dave Meltzer was reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that a potential CM Punk heel run in AEW is apparently down to crowd reactions. So leading up to Punk's return, he was getting mixed reactions in every city when he was announced, but Chicago was unanimously behind him, of course. Uh, there was reportedly talk before his return that he'd be fine going heel if this is what the crowd reactions would be. And I think that, you know, it, it's probably the best way to play it. It's hardly right. a surprising news update because it's one of those things where, you know, if you go anywhere and somebody's getting booed out of the building, you kind of have to do something about it. You have to react. But right? I, I think we're in, a, uh, we're in a nice little situation here where no matter what, CM Punk will get cheered in Chicago. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, there's anything it's that man Canada, could do. It? Yeah, so this is it. I think they could do the Brit in Canada with him. Um, but I think it's it's very strange. You mentioned that <laughs> you, if you get those reactions, though, yeah. you have to do something with it. Cody Rhodes was an example of that in AEW. <laughs> he was getting booed out of yeah. the building, and they did nothing with it. Yeah. But I think CM Punk is maybe a little bit more self-aware than Cody Rhodes. Sorry, Cody. Um, but I think he's a little bit more self-aware in the fact that he knows that he's such a good heel. Yeah. Right now, people do want to boo him outside of Chicago. We've seen it. Mixed responses. Plus, he's got the mic skills to just make anything work, doesn't he? So it, it's like you can kind of send him out there on the fly with no script, I'd imagine, and let yeah. him just go off on the audience. We say that, but also last week's promo, he did a fantastic job of getting the fans behind him. It yeah. was a great way to kick off Collision, a great way to kick off his return. You know, the tell me when I'm telling lies thing. Yeah. He feels a little bit... I don't want to say tweenery, but it feels like one of those things that it will really depend on the crowd to how he performs. We're getting a little bit of that Austin spice, aren't we? A little bit. Yeah. We're getting a little spice, you know, <laughs> that Ross would say. But yeah, it feels like each week he might be a heel, he might be a face. That's my personal view of it. But I think uh, we might see him as a heel sooner rather than later. Yeah, I feel so as well. But regarding Punk, uh, Kazuchika Okada was speaking to Sports Illustrated ahead of AEW Forbidden Door, uh, and he commented on the idea of a potential match with CM Punk. Uh, speaking through an interpreter, he said, I'm not sure. The Young Bucks are kind of friends of mine, Whoa. but if fans want to see the match, I want to do it in Chicago. He would go on to speak about his match at Forbidden Door and a potential match with John Moxley by saying my focus is on Danielson, not him, but having wrestled him in tag matches, I feel he's better than I imagined. I'd definitely be excited to wrestle him in a singles match someday, and I think we'd all be very much excited to see that. Let's I, I, make that happen. I want both Let's matches. Make, just do it the night after Forbidden Door. Let's just go. Let's just do yeah, it. Do give it them the whole show. Give them the yeah. whole show. You give them give them a, a three-hour <laughs> time limit. You go have at it. It's a lights-out <laughs> match. You can do whatever you want. It would it would be a really sick match. I think even a match with CM Punk, that would be great. Or Cannabis yeah. Punk is a match we've not seen. We've not seen them ever in the ring together. It's, it's no-brainer stuff, isn't it? You know, you're taking the biggest competitor in a company, putting up against the biggest, some of the biggest competitors in, in the, you know, the other company. Mm -hmm. It's what Forbidden Door as an event is kind of about, and I think it wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility that maybe when we roll around to Forbidden Door 3, we're going to have one of these two matches sort of sitting on the slate. I am glad, though, they went with Okada versus Danielson as the first match, yeah. because that feels like a much bigger deal, the fact that it's Danielson... such been, a dream match. Right? Danielson's... Yeah. He, there was talk of him maybe going, and going to New Japan before he could get cleared, and that mm. would be a dream match back in 2016 and 2017. But and now, now imagine all the anger, all the anger that's been building up because that match hasn't been able to happen. It's not been able to happen. They're going to kick each other's Tomorrow night's going to be very, off. very, very good. And hopefully in the future, we'll see both CM Punk and John Marksley face Okada. Well, yeah. on the point of New Japan Pro Wrestling, AEW Fight Forever is set to release Thursday, but uh, the Senior Vice President of Business Development for AEW, uh, sorry, partnerships and video games Nick Sobic has said that they're open to the idea of adding New Japan stars to the game via future DLC which is yeah very I, I think that is very, 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 very tantalizing thing, yeah. we've not really had much in the way of um, substantial New Japan appearances in games uh, over again here outside, of Fire, outside Pro, that's, of Fire Pro that's it there you go um, he said we have a great relationship with New Japan if we had unlimited time we probably had uh, sorry we'd probably have both full rosters in our game that goes back to if the fans love the game and continue to play the game and request new characters 
sectors and new leagues. We have enough flexibility. Everything's on the table. We're excited to see the feedback and what people want to see more of. And I'm into this. I like the idea that we could mm -hmm. maybe see New Japan cross over into the game. That means, you know, there might be potential for some AAA stars some to cross over as well. Game, that makes the most stars. sense. You know, with that, I imagine there'll, there'll be a lot of content you're able to generate in and around other promotions that are in you yeah. know, the AEW sphere. And it'll add to the feeling, you know, of the open wrestling world that we're getting. So I think it could also add a lot of the longevity that they want to give to this game. They've, they've said in the past that this is a more a live service game than, than really just a standalone title. This yeah. is one that they want to have as the base and they'll build upon for years to come. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's one way to do it. If you can say like next, this time next year, Forbidden Door 3, oh, yeah. by the way, you can now play Okada in the game. But you can now play Shibata in the game. It's yeah. like, there's something to be said for having the ability, the skill, uh, the team, the management to be able to release a game every year. But I think that when it is, you know, it, it is kind of a gamble. Even yeah. for AEW to have a game, you know, you, nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's going to be kind of, you know, an instant success. But it's one of those things where I think that if you, um, if, if you have that kind of drive behind it and if people are supporting it, then... I, I do see it being a better plan to kind of just add and add and add until you get that perfect. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, right, let's do the next one. And that is the new base level. Exactly. That sets you up quite easily. Yeah. But that's the key quote there that I think that he says, this goes, that goes back to the fans love the game and continue to play the game. That is going to be the breaking point. So basically, pretend you've got a Dreamcast and you don't want them to turn the servers off. When you get Fight Forever, just leave it on. Just play it. Just leave just your PC it. on, leave your console on, whatever you're doing. Just, just leave it running. Yeah. Get well, those play times all the way up. <laughs> keep those hours <laughs> counting. But as I said, we will have a review of it uh, next week on the channel and on Keltolic.com. You know what I really want? I want like a Japanese Gaijin Legends pack like Brody mm. and Hansen. And just, Ooh. oh, that'd be gnarly. Get, send, send Nick an email. <sighs> Well, uh, moving over to AEW now, just sort of the, the out of the game, the real AEW. Yeah. Uh, All In has hit a major new milestone. This one comes from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. They've revealed that tickets for All In at Wembley have passed the 66,500 paid attendance mark and it's grossed $8.35 million. It's now the largest paid attendance for a pro wrestling show since WrestleMania in 2016, which is an all-time record and will be very difficult for All In to beat. I mean, 101 thousand was the official figure i think it was you know the, the contested figures are yeah. somewhere around ninety three thousand or something uh, well, which is still gargantuan it's still insane <laughs> i feel like that's a number that they should have been touting anyway being it felt like, like it hey, felt like you had an entire city of people in that room you were there like, right yeah, yeah it was insane so Absolutely like insane. all in hitting that hitting that number of sixty six thousand five hundred people that's an insane number wrestling in the uk is hot right now people want to go and see this i wouldn't be surprised that once they actually start announcing people for the card and announcing matches for the show well, this is it. It's sort of as you get more and more announced, you you've gonna have more people right. pick you'll up tickets because it's gonna be more and more must see, surely. Exactly, and you'll have walk ups. I imagine people yeah. in the area that just go, oh, it's on this weekend. Let's go. <laughs> they set aside a traditional amount of walk ups for the the dedicated wrestling fans who yep. don't pre book tickets. Don't pre book tickets. They just, just walk up, pay on the door. Exactly, but it's an exciting <laughs> get the little <laughs> raffle ticket. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But I'm excited for all in. Very excited. Uh, well, we got some news that we touched on in the last video regarding Impact Wrestling, don't we, Fraser? We do indeed. We mentioned uh, Motor State Machine Guns being a uh, sort of big key point of Impact Wrestling at the moment. Well, the Wrestling Observer reports that Impact decided to put the Impact World title on Alex Shelley because he signed a full-time contract with the company. Uh, prior to this, he was working a 40-hour week as a physiotherapist on top of wrestling 100 independent dates a year. Uh, the report actually makes a note that he was he only had seven days off last year, um, which <laughs> Jesus. that's... That's insane. Yeah. Uh, big up Alex Shelley. Up the Alex Shelley. Up the Alex Shelley. Um, he recently, so he recently signed full time with Impact Wrestling. So it's not surprising that, that Impact went. Okay, we're gonna give you we're give you the belt. You're you're gonna be here full time. I mean, the pair of them so synonymous with the brand. It makes sense. You know, they are flag bearers. They right. they they're flag bearers whether they have the titles or not. And I think it makes sense to put those flag bearers in that position and give the fans who you know have been because like Jack's a massive uh, Machine Guns fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mean, it must have been awesome for him to see them both just kind of yeah. pop back up and and immediately kind of carry on. Like going back awesome. to the days of like 2007, 2008, 2009 with the Motor State Machine Guns were just coming up yeah. um, and they, they, they were they felt like the Young Bucks before the Young Bucks yeah. so then when we got them versus Generation Me 
what a, what a match, you know? And then having the payoff be 10, 10, 12, 13 years later, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin on the top of impact in two different divisions. Yeah. It's great. I do worry that Alex Shelley won't have a long title reign. I think this is very much a, here's your run with the belt. I hope he's not transitional. We've had, but we've had quite a, a few long title reigns in Impact recently. Yeah. So I think maybe it's going to just establish a, him. He the brings a different scene. start of that division though. And I think that's why I kind of want to see him hold it for just a little while. You know, it doesn't need to be a mega long run, but a good few months would be give nice. Us, give us some Forbidden Door action with Impact again. Oh. Get him on AEW oh. for, with the belt, please. Well, please. moving on to the real Forbidden Door, the one that's welded shut and will never open. <laughs> uh, we've got an update on a WWE return. Now, according to a report again from the Wrestling Observer, newsletter drew mcintyre is expected back in wwe shortly uh, wwe's reportedly hopeful of getting him in to return for money in the bank on july 1st but the report notes that nothing's official outside of them discussing dates for a return creative plans have not been finalized he did recently make an appearance at the special olympics in berlin as a representative for wwe so that indicates he is still in and around yep. and working with the company the likelihood of him coming back is now much higher than when it was a little bit more up in the air uh, and drew you know if they can get him back in time for money in the bank that is just such a natural place to put him in right. insane crowd response everybody's going to want to see him i feel like with smackdown and money in the bank both being in the o2 this this coming week next weekend um i feel like the natural place instead of wasting the return on smackdown because yeah. he's a raw superstar which i don't think they'll make him return in the newcastle house show which is a shame <laughs> um I think he'll be uh, an eighth entrant into Money in the Bank ladder match. Yeah. We've got seven people in there already, Logan Paul being the most recent addition to there. I think the natural place for Drew would be to return in that match. My only worry is he won't win it. Yeah. And it might but sour the crowd a little bit. It depends. Bit. You know, you can take him out of it in very many ways. So Se there's, there's a lot of things you can do to th that don't make him look weak, I guess, right. for, for coming back and not immediately just kind of winning it. Uh, but either way, I, I think, you know, Drew being back is a great thing. Uh, it's just another, you know, feather in the, the heavyweight division. Right. And I hope he gets booked really, really well. I think him as a challenger to Seth Rollins on the raw side of things for the world heavyweight title yeah. is, a, is a natural step He'd to go. He looks so good with that belt. It God would, damn, give him it. it. I'm right. Well, oh. it's Forbidden Door this weekend, oh, so yeah. please don't forget to watch Forbidden Door, but maybe don't watch Forbidden Door, watch watch our coverage of Forbidden Door yeah. instead. Huh? How yeah. about that? What we got coming up for it? We've got some live reactions at midnight tomorrow night, myself and Tom. We have What Happened At. We've got WTF Moments. We'll have the news. We'll have lists. We'll have um, uh, other things that you can consume. The podcast top is out. Of all of the regular all content. Of the regular content. It's chaos. It's chaos, I tell you, Sam. But this weekend is a big bumper weekend of wrestling. We've done the news. I'm going to tear up the script, rewrite it. Come on. You like Vince? I don't like it. <sighs> no. Get LA Knight out of the news. We're not doing it. Oh. See you later.